Hey guys, Marco here from Viero Live CS. Welcome back to the channel. Today we will complete the review of flight instruments and display system. And we are going to talk about the last four non-normal checklists we have for this system. I hope you like the video. Let's start our flight and we are going to press toga switch. Here we go flying. We have N1 toga. Thrust is set. Let's set that gear up. Head and select binary speed, speed. Autopilot command A is engaged. Flaps up. Flaps are coming up. And we have flaps up, no lights. Engine bleeds on, packs auto. Engine start switches off. Auto brakes off, landing gear off. The first thing we are going to talk about today is the displays control panel non-normal checklist, which I cannot simulate here in the sim, but we will see what FCOM says about this condition and then we'll go through the checklist. Now on the image here, you can see how it looks when we get this annunciation on the PFD. And FCOM 2 says, indicates a fail if it's control panel on the affected side. When display's control panel appears in the lower right-hand corner of the display, altitude information is removed. Now, before we continue, let's go to the overhead panel and let's see what this says. With the control panel, select switch on the overhead panel in, both on one, both the captain's and first officer's CDS, displays and barrel are controlled from the left IFIS panel. When we have it in normal, left IFIS panel controls captain CDS displays and barrel, right IFIS panel controls first officers CDS displays and barrel. Both on two, both the captains and first officers CDS displays and barrel are controlled from the right IFIS control panel. Just remember CDS stands for Common Display System. If we get this condition, we will have to call for the Displays Control Panel Non-Normal Checklist. And the condition is, the Displays Control Panel Annunciation indicates the IFIS Control Panel is failed. Note, the altimeter blanks and altitude flag illuminates on the side corresponding to the failed control panel. Then we'll go to the control panel select switch, both on one or both on two, and we will have to select the operating control panel. Verify that the displays control panel annunciation and altitude flag extinguish. And that would be the end of the displays control panel non-normal checklist. Next uh, non-normal checklist we're going to talk about is the display source. As you can see in the PFD, you can see display source uh, indication here. And it should actually say display source 1 or display source 2. In this case, this is what we see in the sim, but I failed the number 1. So we will suppose that the number 1 is showing on the PFD. So let's go to the checklist. And it says condition. The display source 1 or display source 2 annunciation indicates only one DEU is supplying display information. Indications may include no hydraulic pressure indication on the fail side. So let's go and check the hydraulic indications in our systems. So we'll come to the lower DEU and uh, we'll check the systems button. And as you can see in the fail side, we have no hydraulic pressure indication. What we could also see is a speed limit flag shown on the fail side. Minimum maneuver speed and stick shaker band removed on the fail side. Both EEC alternate lights illuminated. 
Note, flight director indications may be removed and auto flight mode reversals may occur. Dual autopilot approach is not available. Before we continue, I want to read from the Boeing 737 MRG app. Uh, again, I want to thank Captain Pat Boone for allowing me to use some of his amazing uh, app. I will leave a link in the description below so you can go and check it out. I think it's an amazing tool for all of us studying the Boeing 737. If we go to the display source on the MRG, it says the display source message replaces the CDS fold amber flag on ground with both engines running and in flight. Okay, now let's continue with the non-normal checklist. Uh, choose one. Display source one annunciation is shown. Verify that the correct flight director indications and flight mode annunciations are shown on the first officer side. Select autopilot B. As I told you, I failed number one. And some of these indications we are reading in the non-normal checklist, we cannot see them here, but we are going to assume that we have the display source one. Let's follow the checklist and we'll select autopilot B. Autopilot command B is engaged. We'll go to step two. Step two says choose one. EEC alternate lights are illuminated. Let's check if they are. In this case, they are not illuminated. If they were illuminated, they will look like this. You could see it like this, alternate. So if they are not illuminated, that's the end of the checklist. If those lights were illuminated, we'll go to step three, which says EEC alternate mode checklist has been completed. That's the end of the non-normal checklist. If the EEC alternate mode checklist has not been completed, we should go to the EEC alternate mode non-normal checklist. Now we'll uh, come back to the first page of the non-normal checklist and uh, we'll choose display source two annunciation is shown. Then we'll have to verify that the career flight director indications and flight mode annunciations are shown on the captain's side. In this case, we'll select autopilot A. And again, we'll basically do exactly the same thing. We'll go to step two, which we already reviewed. Our next non-normal checklist is the flight recorder off. And remember, we can see this light here off for the flight recorder. The condition, the flight recorder is off, continue normal operation, and that's the end of the non-normal checklist. The last uh, non-normal checklist we are going to talk about is the indicator airspeed disagree condition. The indicator airspeed disagree alert indicates the captain's and first officer's airspeed indications disagree. In this case, we will have to go to the airspeed unreliable non-normal checklist. And that will be the end of the checklist here. If you guys missed that video for the airspeed unreliable, please just uh, hit the link above and you can go and uh, review the whole condition for the airspeed on Reliable. Okay, guys, that's the end of the video for today. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you are not subscribed to the channel yet, please do it now. And don't forget to hit that bell so you will be notified once we upload a new video. If you think these videos could be useful for somebody else, please share them. And that's going to help me a lot to grow the channel. Next week, we will continue with the Boeing 737-800NG system review. Until then, guys, please take care. I hope to see you soon.